Hi everyone, I'm Michela Verucchi and I'm a PhD student at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. And I'm here to present you my paper called The Latency of Word Generation of Single Ray Deaths from Multi Ray Tasks. Uh, this contribution is the outcome of a joint collaboration between the University of Modena and the University of Munich since I spent one year at the chair of uh, Professor Kakamo. This is just an outline uh, of the presentation. Uh, I will make a brief introduction uh, and then uh, I will explain a bit the DAG model and some end-to-end -end latency concepts that uh, we used uh, in, in the work before dipping into the real contribution. Finally, uh, I will reach the conclusion and talk about future works. When dealing with the theory of real-time scheduling, there are two very important aspects. that are the model that you choose to represent your tasks and the scheduling choices that you make. For the former aspect, in the literature, several models can be found, starting from the lua Leda model, going through the elastic model, generalized multi-frame, mixed criticality model, or splitted model. All of them represent tasks as sequential jobs. With the increasing complexity of the application, more expressive models were also proposed, as the graph-based ones. Then, once picked the model, some scheduling choices have to be made. As if your tasks will run on a single processor or on a multiprocessor, if your schedule will be a global one or a partitioned one, if the algorithm will consider fixed or dynamic priorities, and last but not least, the preemption policy. Now, uh, let us consider a real application. I've picked an automotive application, a self-driving car demo that was developed by the lab where I work in for an European project. Self-driving car are a real-time system, a very complex one. On the left, you can see a prototype of a self-driving car. The car is equipped with three kinds of sensors, a GPS, a LiDAR and four cameras. The sensors are needed to perceive the surroundings and they feed the output to the application. Each of them has a given rate. In particular, the cloud and the GPS poles are fed into the localization task, while the frames and the point cloud are given to a detection and sensor fusion task. Localization and sensor fusion provide their output to the planner, which then feeds the control and finally actuation is performed. As you can see, uh, there is the need to capture many features with a, a very expressive model. That is why we decided to pick the DAG model to represent this kind of applications. This model was introduced in 2012 by Sanjay Barwa, and it represents tasks as directed as cyclic graphs. The nodes of the DAG are paths of code, while the edges represent presence and constraints between them, meaning that if there is a edge between node 1 and node 2, node 2 cannot start its execution until node 1 is completed. In the figure, for example, node 3 cannot start until both node 1 and node 2 have finished their execution. This model allows you to represent explicitly both parallelism and precedent constraint. Another important concept that I want to introduce is a chain in the DAG, which is a sequence of connected nodes. The longest chain in the DAG is crucial for scalability. When considering to end latency instead, thus chains play a big role. Is a schematic representation of the self-driving application, including also periods of the tasks. As you can see, this is just a multi-rate periodic task set. The dash edges represent the exchange of data, not uh, precedent constraints. Indeed, a task chain is defined as a chain of different tasks that exchange data from a starting task to an ending task. For example, camera, detection, fusion, planner and control is a task chain. Now, the end-to-end -end latency of these touch chains are really important. In particular, we can define two latencies, data age and reaction time. The first measure how long a data can last, from the moment it enters a chain to the last moment it affects the application. On the other hand, reaction time measures the reactivity, from the moment a data enters the chain to the first moment it's reflected to its output. Now that I've introduced all the blocks, the problem that we wanted to solve was considering a periodic multi rate task set, as a self driving uh, application example, where task chains are defined and produce a single drag that describes the application. 
This deck should be capable of handling multi-rate, should be scalable on a given number of calls, and um, its task chains uh, should meet some given latency requirements. Therefore, we needed to solve four sub-problems. Obviously, we started from the literature, and we tried to check what was already there in the state of the art regarding this problem. We found four works that aim at solving something similar, but as you can see, none of them captured all the aspects we needed to tackle. So we came up with our solution, a latency-aware generation of DAX starting from a multi-rate periodic task set. Actually, the input of the method is composed by a periodic task set, as chains that define the data exchange between the tasks, bounds on reaction time and data age, and maximum number of calls available. The proposed method gives an output of not a single DAX, but a collection of DAX that meet all the given requirements. Now, let us consider a simple example to understand the conversion from the periodic multi-array task set to a single array DAG. In the example, we have three tasks with a period of 10, 30, and 30. A single data chain is defined from tau 0 to tau 2 through tau 1. Its data age should not exceed 50 milliseconds. The conversion is divided in four steps. Let's see. The first step is replication. The period of the resulting DAG is computed as the hyperperiod between the input tasks, in this case 30. Then for each task tau x, a number of jobs equal to the ratio between the hyperperiod and the period of tau x is added in the DAG. In this case tau 0 will have three instances or jobs, while tau 1 and tau 2 only one. We also add the starting and ending points of the DAG and we insert the obvious precedent constraints between consecutive jobs. The second step is synchronization. We are setting the period of the DAG to the hyper period of the task set. However, we want to be sure that every task keeps its own period somehow. To do so, we insert a synchronization node that force the jobs to start before or after a certain time unit, and dial me nodes to distance the synchronization nodes. The third step is the most important one, the permutation. Since here only one DAG was created because there weren't many possible options, however, when it comes to present constraint between jobs, we have many chances. As I said, the dashed edge represents data exchange, not precedent constraints. This means that the precedent constraint could be arranged in all possible ways. When considering two tasks with the same period, we only have two choices. The example, we could insert a present constraint from tau 10 to tau 20 or vice versa. But when we consider tasks with different periods, the solution are way more. Even in this easy example, tau 1 and tau 0 could have 10 different arrangements. All the jobs could be serialized, and there exist four different ways to do so. Tau 1 could be parallel to one single job of tau 0 in three different ways or it could run in parallel to two jobs of tau zero in two ways, or all of them could be parallel. This leads, of course, to an increase of the computational cost of the overall method, which is affected by the ratio between the minimum and maximum period and the number of edges. The rest of, the, rest of the cost is due to the basic matrix operation that are used to compute all the other values. The last step is the reduction reduction in the edges and in the number of obtained decks. Transitive reduction is applied to remove all the redundant edges first. Then all the decks that contain cycles, which then are not cyclic graphs anymore, are removed, as well as the decks whose longest chain is greater than the hyper period, because those are not scalable for sure. So now we have a collection of well-constructed decks that could meet the requirements. We only have to check the end-to-end -end latency and the scalability, and pick the best solution by a cost function. To compute the end-to-end -end latency, we refer to the AutoSAR implicit model. In this model, a task is assumed to read at the beginning of its execution and writing at its end. Then we compute four additional values, namely the earliest and latest starting and finishing times, taking into account all the present constraints. Considering a task at different rates, latencies are computed at job levels. 
Given a task chain from tau x to tau y, the reaction time depends on the first job of tau y that definitely reacts to a fixed job of tau x. The data age, on the other hand, is based on the last job of tau y that surely reacts to a fixed job of tau x. In our deck, all the jobs in the hyperperiod of the starting task of a chain are considered, and the maximum of the computer data age and reaction time represent the correct value for the chain. Further explanation of the exact method can be found in the paper or implemented in the code. For the scalability, we applied a list scheduling heuristic for non preemptive decks. The jobs are ordered by their lastest finishing time, and they are dispatched on the available core only when the unit time is greater than the early starting time, and all their predecessors are completed. This approach allows us both to check scalability and to build a schedule. The results on simulation show that we are able to find a correct deck for the input requirements. In the charts on the left, you can see the results of the simulation the execution of the deck for 10 at the power of 9 milliseconds. On the x-axis, you can find the reaction time in the top or the data age in the bottom. On the y-axis, the number of occurrences. Given that the deck has parallel nodes, the execution is not fixed and can vary in different executions. The important thing is that the latency of the considered chain do not ever cross the bound we computed and stay under the requirements, that is, in this case, 150 milliseconds. For a comparison with the state of the art, we performed some tests on a real benchmark provided by Bosch that specify the periods of the tasks and their interaction. We ran the test on 100 tasks set, each of them composed of 5 tasks and 15 task chains. For the other approaches that did not propose method to check scalability or end-to-end -end latencies, we applied our solution. The first line of the table shows that our method was almost always able to find a scalable solution. The other rows shows which one among the four methods was able to find the tightest bound for end-to-end -end latency, meaning impose precedence to meet stricter bounds. Actually, only data age, because no one else computed reaction time. Our method, in almost the 97% of the cases, find the best solution. It does not accomplish that in the totality of the cases just because it jointly optimizes for all the given task chains, not for one of them, as other methods do. That results in a better whole solution, but not the best local one. In conclusion, we were able to handle multi-rate, converting the task set in a single rate deck, while preserving original period thanks to synchronization and dubby nodes. We could check and build a schedule of each deck by a list scheduling. We proposed a new method to compute both reaction time and data age, and overall, we propose a solution that is able to meet the needed requirements, picking the best DAG out of all the admissible permutation by a cost function. Moreover, the whole solution is based on matrix operation, and the code is released as open source. However, uh, even though we achieved good results, this work can be improved in many ways. First of all, uh, we would like to find a way to reduce the presentation exploration while still finding the best result. Indeed, one of the problem of the presented solution is the high computational cost that depends on the ratio of the periods and the hedges. As I said at the beginning, uh, real-world applications are more and more complex and need expressive models. Therefore, we would like to enrich our solution adopting conditional DAGs and also considering heterogeneous platforms, uh, for example, a multiprocessor coupled with uh, one or more accelerators. Lastly, we would like also to incorporate memory in order to handle memory interference as well, maybe adopting a prem fashion solution. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for the attention, and if you have any question, please don't hesitate to send me an email. If you want to access the code, here's the link uh, to my GitHub repository. And uh, finally, I would like to thank the effort of the organizer uh, that uh, allows us to have Ertas virtual. 
and thank you for listening to me. Take care, everyone.